You're listening to SM Media, the number one place for exclusive content. <laughs> Hi everyone and welcome to this week's episode of the Scottish Football Show right here on SM Media. I'm Scott with Pidley to be here again. Joined as always by Wilson. Wilson, has been very busy but what's been happening? Didn't start off well. Um, Kelly, Kelly got another doing the day from Aberdeen. Um, which wasn't, it wasn't a great performance, never mind result. Um, but I have to congratulate both Celtic Hearts, Man United and Leeds United for two Extra special games this afternoon, which were both great to watch as well. Aye, definitely. Shankers isn't here this week, but we'll, we'll hope to have him back next week. And we're joined by a very special guest this week. Former Falkirk, Party Thistle, Dumbarton, Albion Rovers and Airman, Ryan McStay. It's a pleasure to welcome you on, Ryan. Thanks for joining us. I know what looking forward to it, lads, aye. What's happening? You good? I'm all good, mate. I was at work today, so I had to watch the, the Celtic game and work. Uh, again, it was, a, it was a tough watch, but obviously... Celtic make history makes it all worthwhile. So uh, it was good. Uh, but obviously there's uh, big problems at Celtic. I think uh, if I'm just touching before that there, that the next three games are massive before we play Rangers in the second of January. If you can't beat uh, Ross County, Hamilton and Dundee United, then you don't deserve any if you ask me. So the next week's a, a massive week leading up to the, the old firm. So hopefully Celtic can get back into some sort of form. Because watching that today, we turn all up. If we get beat then uh, for me, Lennon's obviously got to go, but obviously we, we scraped through with the keeper redeeming himself after coming out no man's land and trying to punch that. So he's yeah. redeemed himself, but obviously uh, you take it to Channing, and obviously we've uh, got the quadruple treble, so it's a uh, history maker. So yeah, it's, it was a good day. Definitely. We'll start there. We'll, we'll start with the Scottish Cup final. Obviously Celtic, historic quadruple treble. Wilson, how, how important... And historic is that achievement for Celtic? I mean, it's, it's, it's something that's absolutely incredible. You know, let's not beat about the bush what, <clears throat> what the, the club and the various managers and players have achieved. And again, echoing what uh, Martin Neal, who was on the, <clears throat> the punditry panel today, says it'll never be achieved again. I wouldn't, I wouldn't think for a minute it would be. Um, but again, a, a wee bit different to maybe Ryan's uh, thoughts on it. I still think there's a, a black cloud hanging over um, some, somewhere at Celtic Park, the manager's office of the dressing room. <clears throat> Things just don't, um, they just don't seem right. And again, Neil Lennon's a hell of a lot more qualified than me to be making these decisions. But I honestly felt in stages Lennon was trying to lose the game with some of these substitutions and things and possibly start line up as well. I, I, I mean, again, at the end of the day, they won the cup. That's all anyone's going to remember. But as I say, I, I genuinely don't see, as uh, Ryan touched on there, those beating, being able to beat Hamilton, Dundee United and whoever, and going to uh, Ibrox with any sort of confidence. Because if that had been, no disrespect to Hearts, if that had been, that second half performance had been up against a team, maybe not even Rangers, I'm talking a team that's maybe got a, a good striker, you know, a Dundee United or a Hibs, a Martin Boyle, a Nicky Clark, whoever, they would have punished Celtic in that second half, in that first 15 minutes of that second half. The boy Ginelli, I know he scored late on, two unbelievable chances um, to, to put Hearts you know, away. Um, and obviously it's, it's quite a penalty and they've got it. And at the end of the day, folk will count the trophies. I'm not going to go back and analyse the performance, but I, I just there's just something not right there. I, I, I don't know what it is, but it, it's just not right. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll go through the game kind of the first half Celtic mm -hmm. obviously would go 2-0 up two excellent goals for Christ Ryan Christie's goal was amazing and then Edward you know, the Penenka was was a bit cheeky but it was very very good 2-0 up at half time and Ryan they looked, they looked as if they were in cruise control they looked, they looked as if they were back to the Celtic at the past the three the three trebles beforehand they just looked so in control they, they looked as if they were playing some good stuff and were back to normal what did you kind of think of the first half were you impressed I was impressed, as you say, it was uh, the Celtic of old. They were getting the ball down, they were passing, they were getting it wide. Yeah, I knew she was getting on the ball. Uh, Chris has scored a goal similar to the one he had in uh, last month. Uh, I think he's been getting a wee bit unfair criticism because obviously Celtic's been off the boil, but every time he gets on the ball, he tries to make something happen with a forward pass, he gives it away. But I'd rather somebody doing that than uh, just passing the ball sideways and no going anywhere. Celtic football club you're playing for, you've got to uh, get the ball forward. and. 
Going back to maybe the last year and a half, Celtic always played with two up top, Edward and Griffiths. This year they're not doing it, and just Griffith, uh, Edward up top just looks uh, disinterested. He's obviously the ball's came up to him, he's bouncing off him. He's going back to the Edward when he first came, when people were starting to doubt why we paid nine million for him. Obviously, Dembele was uh, the first choice, but then mm-hmm. uh, the goal Ibrox kind of kick, kick started his Celtic career. Mm-hmm. He went on from strength to strength and then just, I think, since we went out of Europe, uh, the Champions League is just kind of down to a wee bit and you're just wanting, I said, your main player to step up to the plate and uh, drag the others around him. But it's, you could go through the full team. Look at that the day with Duffy and Julian at the back falling over the ball and the boy yeah. nips through and obviously he's not comfortable in his left foot. He's trying to take it his right foot. Uh, again, second half, in my head, I'm just expecting, even when we go 3-2 up in extra time, uh, you're expecting Hearts to come back and score. That should never happen at a team like Celtic. You know what I mean? It's no disrespect, as they might say, they're their own. It's, Hearts are a big club, but they're in the Championship. You know what I mean? So Celtic should be dealing with them, especially 2 0 up. I think if Hearts are going to win that for a position when you're 2 0 down at half time, it's curtains for Neil Lennon, definitely. Uh, so obviously, it gives them another probably week and a half before we go to with Ibrox. And as I say, hopefully, we've got nine points to buy before we play them. And then obviously we take it for there too. Who knows? You could go there and uh, beat them and it kick starts your season. So when Celtic, obviously, as I said, Mark, there's definitely problems at Celtic Park. Definitely. Obviously, definitely. I'm a big fan of Lee Griffiths. Bailed us out on a few occasions. Uh, notably, Aberdeen away. Come on, changed the performance. Obviously, we gave away a, a last minute penalty. St. Johnson away. It was going down and each has come on. Uh, Pulled us through and got us two, two more points. So, there's obviously problems with him. If it was me, I'm, him and Edward play up top for me every game. Especially at Celtic Park, we're playing five at the back and two holding midfielders. That's never been heard of Celtic against teams like Ross County. Obviously, Ross County lost a uh, party base with their manager yesterday. Yeah. Apart from beating Celtic, they've been on a horrible run. So you've got to look at that as well. The only result they've got is against Celtic at Parkhead. That shouldn't be happening. Mm-hmm. But getting into the second half, obviously Hearts bring uh, get back into it, the, the two goals, and then it's it's kind of it's it's all Hearts the second half. Like, where did you just kind of hang? Did you say was it what was going through your head when like with Celtic just obviously dropping, losing two goals? Did you think it was Hearts Hearts were taking control of the game? Well, Absolutely. When <clears throat> I mean, you scored three minutes into the second half, um, but. I think again, I think you've got to give credit to Robbie Nielsen. You know, oh, definitely, he a, yeah. He made a sub. He's also given them a half time team talk to try and, you know, get them back into the game. Um, but, and from, from what I was seeing as well, I, I thought in the first half, and I, I know he's a young guy and he's, you know, he's got to learn, blah, blah, blah. But the young goalkeeper, you know, J- Julian cleared a couple away from him, you know, in the first half. Yeah, just really come and take it. He yeah. kind of fumbled the one where Naismith could have got a wee two on it. And I, I felt the back four kind of lack confidence in what was behind them. Yeah. Um, and, and again, it's understandable. He's a, he's a young man, you know, he's played maybe six or seven first team games uh, and then he's pitched into a, a big cup final. But then, as I say, I don't want to use the expression, but when, when Hart scored that goal, Celtic absolutely crumbled. Um, and it just, it, it looked as if this is going to be 4-5-2 at Hearts before, you know, and, and this is what I was kind of I was debating on, a, on another chat. It, Ryan, I don't know much better than me. When when an opposition manager makes a substitution like that, and they're absolutely ripping Celtic to shreds, surely the, the manager then has to counter react to that and do something to stem the flow. But he, he waited about thirty minutes, you know, but, but before he reacted to, to his own substitutions. Now you know you could go to dictate your own game plan on games, etc. But it was absolutely killing Celtic. That's what I'm saying. It's even been a Nicky Clark and a Martin Boyle, Kevin Nisbet, you know, somebody that can score goals. Celtic would have been absolutely destroyed today, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Definitely. We we're getting extra time. Lee Griffiths, is, as Ryan says, gets Celtic back back in the lead. And how big a goal was that for for him, do you think, to get him back and kind of full confidence? It's massive. Obviously, there's a lot being made of it. Lee Griffiths, eh, I know for a fact, because obviously I'm the player assistant manager at St. Locks, and I know for a fact he was in uh, during lockdown at, at our ground, uh, working with Scott Ireland uh, daily, uh, working on his fitness. And then when you see pictures, of people are saying he's overweight. He's not overweight, he just needs games. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's why for the last two months he's been coming on for maybe the last 
10, 15 minutes. You're not going to get Mark Sharpness playing. You need to play him against teams at home, like your likes are your Hamilton, uh, your Dundee United, uh, teams like that to get him up to speed, not flying him on with 10, 15 minutes to go. And then last week against Lille, obviously a nothing game for us. He's sitting on the bench. The weekend again doesn't come on again. So obviously there's something blocking in the background here. Uh, and it wouldn't, be, wouldn't surprise me if he's maybe looking for a new challenge come January because there's no point of sitting about for the next uh, four or five months getting 10, 15 minutes here and there where he should be, in my opinion, uh, one of your top uh, main players up front, Edward. Definitely. He likes a Clamalla's got more game time in him. No. Clamalla for me is not Celtic class, nowhere near it. I mean, I, I 100% agree with what uh, Ryan said there, but and, and we touched on this a couple of weeks ago. You know, I if Lee Griffiths leaves Celtic in January, is it a case of then it's it's a player that doesn't believe they can claw this uh, league back from from Rangers and and do it? And you're thinking, I don't want to be part of the team that didn't win ten because we we should we should have won it. You know, going by financial and squad depth, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If if, so, if a massive massive player like Lee Griffiths leaves, does that kind of more or less say? I have no faith in Neil Lennon and the board or whoever to deliver this title. Yeah, I wouldn't say that. I just think it comes down to game time for him. Obviously, he's getting on his career. He doesn't want to sit about. And obviously, he's, he's got well-documented uh, history of his mental health and things like that. And obviously, don't get me wrong, he, he brings a lot on his own with the social media kind of thing. Uh, but he should be judged on the park. And I think every time he comes on, he delivers. He gives the place a lift. Obviously, there's no fans there. I think that's maybe helped Rangers this season uh, playing obviously with no fans because I can remember James Tavenier done a wee quote in his, uh, the Rangers programme saying obviously it was hard to play uh, in front of the Rangers fans at that certain time I think it gives Celtic a lift when they play in front of 60,000 fans mm-hmm. uh, so I think maybe that's been a, a big factor uh, but don't get me wrong Rangers have been absolutely flying this year up until maybe the St Mung game I was, people were asking me what do you think I was like I can't even see them conceding never mind getting beat Obviously, they had a wee wobble against St Mern and then yesterday. I heard they obviously Motherwell part of Boston in the second half and just invited pressure on. I mean, you invite pressure on for a quality team, we'll punish you. Mm-hmm. And that's obviously Rangers run out. You probably deserve 3 1 winners. Mm-hmm, definitely. But I think, going back to Griffiths, I think there needs to come a point where the club and him have got to come to a, obviously a, a suggestion, obviously. But he's got to play more games. If we've got a chance of winning, even challenging for this league, he's got to be in my team, definitely. Mm-hmm, definitely. But Haas get back into it with the, the equaliser and the goes to penalties. See Connor Hazard, like how how important was it that he got he was the winner there? Because it was how important was it for his confidence to get that that winning save and because he'd a, he had a pretty poor game, didn't he, Wilson? I mean I wouldn't necessarily say that poor game. He was he was possibly at fault for the third goal, but um, I, I, do, I, I still don't get goalkeepers having to come out into that area when you've got six foot seven Chris Julian and six foot four Christopher Ayer. You know, that's their job to go and win, win the header. I think he's too far out his goal. You know, from a coaching point of view, you know, I felt six yard box in between the post then come out, but he's come away out. And Hearts are a, a massive team. Mm-hmm. You know, they've got a lot of height, a lot of physicality. And, and that's what was kind of frustrating me through the game, you know, you're looking at all the fouls Celtic were giving away to allow deliveries into the box and Celtic Celtic were going to get punished, they were absolutely going to get punished, Um, but then as a goalkeeper, you're a hero or a villain, you know and he's he's, he's turned out the hero um, in in the end with the two penalty saves, but as I say you know, there's there's goalies that have been playing for 30 years that make mistakes the same as Conor Hazard, you know Mm -hmm. So what what do we think now, do we think this obviously it's a Unbelievable achievement to get 12 trophies in a row. One of the, well, certainly I don't think we'll see it again for, for many, many years. But where, what do you think now, Ryan? Do you think this is a, a turning point for Celtic? We touched on it last week. Like, do we think, obviously, Celtic will kick on? But how big a win was that to get that trophy? And to how do you think they'll capitalise on it? It's massive for the club, obviously. I don't think this was. Touched on it earlier. No, we won't see that again in our lifetime anyway. I don't think it'll be done again. So it's a massive achievement for. Uh, Celtic Football Club but I think there's there's big changes needed it's probably going to happen at the end of the season uh, you see Neil Lennon being there next season probably not uh, Edward could be off Ayer could be off it's going to be a, a full clear out I think 
mm -hmm. in Celtic because obviously Rangers are coming, coming strong under Stephen Gerrard. It's took a while. Again, everybody's praising Gerrard with the stats and things like that, but again, that's another trophy missed during the week there. So a, a club like Rangers, <laughs> if they don't uh, obviously win the league, that's going to be three years without a, a major trophy. That doesn't happen with a club like Rangers. So mm -hmm. again, you're going to be judged on performances and I think that's why Neil Lennon's come under a bit of criticism. Unfairly, I think at times, obviously all the, uh, the protests outside the, the, the stadium is a bit of shambles for a boy, uh, for a, a, a legend like that at Celtic Football Club. It's served his, I think he's won 22 trophies now as a, a player and a manager, so you've got to get him uh, a wee bit more credit and, uh, for a legend like that. But I think under the circumstances for me, I would like to see Celtic maybe invest more, I think in January, I think we need a, a goalkeeper, maybe another centre half. Again, you've brought in Shane Duffy, uh, the quotes on his wages are maybe 30 grand plus. Uh, we've brought in a keeper that's cost us five, six million, who for me doesn't look anywhere near the quality Celtic need. But again, you're going to have him for the majority of his contract, you're maybe going to have to loan him out to get maybe the wages back, because you're not going to uh, regroup, the, regroup the six million you've paid for him. Maybe it's going to Southampton and maybe try to get Fraser Foster back alone, but again, his wages were absolutely unbelievable. But again, if you're going to challenge Rangers and maybe stop flinging away the 10 in a row, you need to do that. You maybe need to fling money in January to get a centre-half, uh, a goalkeeper, maybe a centre-forward if they don't fancy Griffiths. Definitely. But what an achievement for Celtic. 12 trophies in a row, the quadruple treble. Hearts will feel very hard done by, but we'll, we'll move on to the league. We'll touch on the five results over the weekend. Rangers went 16 points clear at the top, a 3-1 win over Murrow after going a goal behind. Roof and Atten getting them back into it. Hibs drew one each with Dundee United. The Dundee United got a late equaliser through Bolton with cancelling out McGuinness's opener. Hamill, big result for them, 1-2-0 away to Ross County. It saw the end of Stuart Kettlewell's run as manager. St Mirren, 3-2, another 3-2 victory at Love Street for them. Uh, Era Horn there winning Urbica with the goals. And today, Aberdeen going to Rugby Park and winning 2-0 at Kilmarnock. We'll start off with, obviously, the, the big talking point, which is Rangers. 16 points clear at the top of the league. Wilson, how big a results are for Rangers to get come from a goal down to get that big result? Honest, um, over the weekend, I think there's much, much bigger talking points uh, than... Uh, Watching Rangers again, but I, th I think um, I, again, I, I, Ryan's touched on it. You know, you go you go to Ibrox for ninety minutes and park the bus. You're, you're, you know, you're going to get broken down eventually. Um, good one, and as I say, a few of my Rangers supporting peers have been on. Uh, you know, saying that, that this is the turn. That, you know, this is their turning point and such because last year or this previous season, if it no strength in depth, you know, and this year. You know, if you'd have said at the start of the season, oh, Morales will not play much or score much this year, you'd have thought they'll be lucky to finish in the top six then. But, you know, Riff's come in and done really well. Um, I, I think every time he seems to play, he seems to come up with a goal. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how, how good he is over a 90-minute game. Um, but I, it's, as I said, and I read a wee stat through the week as well, that I think the previous four competitions that Rangers had lost or been put out of as such, they'd lost the subsequent uh, league game yeah. after. Um, so that's I think that's probably why you know Stephen Gerrard was a bit excited at full time yesterday, because um, as I say I think that I think the lead's unassailable. You know I, I've made no bones about that. Um, I think probably from the from the old firm game, um, but it was, again part of the bus for ninety minutes. You know good good teams at Rangers and I actually watched a bit of the highlights last night. The four looks like he'd have scored a few as well. So um, a, a good a good result for them. And as I say. Points on the board is better than games in hand. Mm -hmm, definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, Ryan, like, obviously you're, you're confident from a Celtic point of view. Like how, what do you, how do you feel going to, going to Everton in the of January? Do you, are you, do you think this Rangers team is going to be hard to beat? Definitely. I think obviously Celtic play Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday uh, against Ross County, Hamilton and Dundee United. I think if you drop any points against these three teams, it's over before we even play them in the second. Uh, so it's got to, you've got to take care of the three teams and then hopefully you get into uh, the game at Ibrox and turn up and do a performance and then it kicks, kick starts your, your season. But if I'm going to be honest, uh, if I had to put, if I had to pick the now, obviously Rangers are flying away. Uh, I'll just get that momentum. You know what it's like when you're playing. Uh, I've had it throughout my career playing at uh, certain teams. 
you turn up, you know you're going to win. That's the way Rangers are now. Uh, obviously, Barn, the St. Long game, and they made a few changes. Uh, I think, get back to Morelos, I think he's come in again, unfair criticism. He's no scored, but again, watching the St. Long game the other night, he's exactly what they missed. Bullying the two centre halves. It's a money to free right the full game. Mm-hmm. Uh, at least if he's no contributing goals, he's, he's maybe putting them off. But obviously, the challenge up at Dundee United, that's what he gives you. Obviously, the defenders know they're in a game. Uh, but obviously, Rangers are demanding more goals off him. But I think Kemar Roof came in and he's been probably the, the play of the season. Barn James Tavernier has been a fantastic signing. He's kicked on. The boy Itton, I've not seen much of, th- much of him, but see, Mark said when he comes in, he does a job and nicks a goal or two. Uh, we are from that I played with Falkirk, uh, top boy. He's been flying for Rangers this year. Again, come in for criticism last year after Rangers fans, but he's kicked on again. So I think, I mean, as a Celtic point of view, we definitely need to win the three games leading up to it, or the league's over. Mm-hmm. We'll touch on the Ross County Hamilton game quickly. A big, massive result for Hamilton, but the big news was obviously Ross County manager Stuart Kettlewell was dismissed. Ryan, were you surprised with this? And how, how random was it to see him coming out and basically after the East press conference saying, that's me done? Were you surprised with that? I was surprised, but it shows the, the marking man, obviously, playing against Kettlewell through, obviously, the number of years when he was, obviously, at Ross County and that. And, uh, to come out and do that shows uh, what kind of guy he is, uh, honest and up front. But I think the way Ross County have played this season, I don't think I'm surprised. I think hopefully they'll be good to him because he's felt that way. Maybe gave him a, a head of the roof job or something like that and keep him involved with the club. I think it's that kind of club they look after their former players and hopefully they'll do that. Uh, but I think, obviously, my former assistant manager at Falkirk, the uh, chipper, Brian Rice, obviously that's a fantastic result for him. Yeah. I think it makes him put some four points ahead of Ross County, so gives him a wee gap and gives him a bit of confidence, obviously, to kick on, but I wasn't surprised that obviously he gets sacked, but hopefully they make a, a good appointment and maybe kick on again, but for a selfish point of view, it was a, a good result for a guy that obviously I've uh, got on with over the years and from a football point of view, he's been one of the biggest influences on my career at the primary. So hopefully he kicks on again. The, the result at Rangers wasn't good at the start of the season. People were calling for his head. I think he's turned it around with a couple of good results. Yeah. And again, hopefully they kick on as well. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Wilson, St Marin got a, another big result, 3-2-1 over St Johnson. How do you kind of take the credit for that for, for last week, encouraging them last week? Sorry, who did I encourage last week? Ali. Aye. Aye. You and Ali were at it. Aye, well, that's right. Aye, aye. Yeah. Again, I, I watched highlights and I, again, I, I know I'm critical of some teams on here, but I, I, I don't get the St. Johnson thing at all. You know, I think they've got some good individual players, um, but I, I just don't see them. It must be, they used to come to Rugby Park twice a year and every game was nil-nil. You know, and they were terrible to watch. But again, Going back to uh, the Ross County thing as well, I'm just going to touch on and ask Ryan and yourself, Scott, do you think this could possibly have a bit of a domino effect in terms of the SPL managers? Like Ross County have acted, well, I suppose Gary Holt resigned, or mutual consent, whatever you want to call it, through a bad run. Um, Stuart Kettle has obviously not survived the run that they're on. Um, Alex Dyer at Comarnock uh, isn't on the best run either. Do you think, you know, that this maybe start a bit of a domino effect with some of the low, uh, the kind of bottom six teams in terms of uh, changing managers? I think it possibly could. I think the problem is, is that Stephen Robinson, I think, was there. Uh, Stephen Robinson as well. He's in a he's in a kind of poor run, but it was kind of Ross County. Ross County are probably the only team you would say were in a really poor run of form. I thought, well, I, can, I want to get your point of view Wilson later on about Kilmarnock with, with Alex Dyer, but I'll pass it over to Ryan. But I think there's potentially, I think we could see a few managers losing their job in the next kind of few weeks or so. But it just, I would say, I, I can I feel a bit for Stuart Kettlewell because I think there is a bit, I, I think it's a bit of, of a strange setup they've got up there. And I think obviously Stephen Ferguson was was a co manager, wasn't he, for a while? Aye, aye. That was a kind of weird, but I'll, I'll pass that to you, Ryan. He moved up the stairs, didn't he? I think. Aye, he moved up to the director of football. Yeah, a strange move at the time, but. Obviously, bit put a, a wee bit more pressure on the boy Caterwell. But as I say, you're, you're maybe only two or three games away for the Saturdays. You've, you've not got two or three years to build a team. 
they're judged on two and three performances. And if you're getting maybe cut adrift at the bottom of the league, you've got people on the board that want to make decisions and want to maybe, you know, maybe have somebody else in line to come in. So it's a uh, football's changed for maybe 20 years ago. You maybe time to try and build a team now, you're judged on results. Because mm-hmm. if Ross County get cut adrift at the bottom, then they'll be away into the championship. It's tough to get out there, you know what I mean? Uh, teams, obviously, Patrick Thistle and Falk, they've dropped down further. Mm-hmm. Two of my former teams, massive, massive clubs, and they'll find it difficult to get out there. Falk are losing the day, I mean, they could maybe have built a wee gap away from the likes of Partick and Cove, who've dropped points over the last few weeks. So that's yeah. difficult once you go on that free throw. Mm-hmm. So, so in saying that, Ryan, if you, if you were in charge at Parkhead, and obviously prior to today, would you, would you, the run Celtic were on, would you have got rid of Neil Lennon then? I've... I was a, I backed Neil Lennon up probably to the Ross County game and then I felt as if a club like Celtic couldn't go on like that. Obviously, they went out of the Champions League, went out of the Europa League uh, and teams like Ross County were coming and putting us out uh, the League Cup. Uh, and I just felt we needed a change, maybe just an injection to try and get us back into the title race. But obviously, the board have seen something different. Dermot Desmond, uh, Peter Lawwell obviously backed him and it's up to Neil Lennon to deliver. Uh, hopefully, we're still in a the next three games determines whether Neil Lennon's going to try and save 10 or all, which uh, at present doesn't look uh, good. But I think, as I touched on it earlier, the, the criticism Neil Lennon got was unfair for, the, for obviously being a legend at the club. But hopefully, from a Celtic point of view, he turns it around. But uh, that's been a wee bit optimistic, I think. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wilson, another, another commander game live in the telly that doesn't end well for you. A 2-0 defeat at home. Wait. I've I've kind of spoke to a few Kilmarnock fans and obviously I want to get your, your views on this. The, all reports has Alec Dyer's a, a really, really good guy and but is it is it getting close to kind of the end of the road for him at Rugby Park? I un, unfortunately I think it is. I mean obviously I'm not, I don't know the man, I've never met the man, but he was part of the whole success around the Steve Clark era. Um and he's came in and usually can I would pull a result out of the heart that you wouldn't expect. And then, but I mean, that's that's one, one in seven. Um, and it's, again, no disrespect, but losing to teams like Hamilton Ackies and things puts a wee bit of pressure on them. But again, and it's going to, this will turn into the Celtic show, much to Scottish disgust. But again, it's, it's, going to, it's going a wee bit back to, you know, what I said about the old firm game. You know, you can, you can see within the players, I don't think they have any confidence in the manager. And I, I can start to see that reflecting in some of the Kilmarnock players. There doesn't seem to be much of a game plan. Um, the substitutions, the, the kind of rotation of the team. Gary Dicker has a big loss, obviously not playing. Malumbu, you know, we've been saying we'll get Malumbu and we'll get him fit. I mean, how long does it take to get fit? Yeah. You know, even, even if he can play 20 minutes here and there, the, the quality that guy possesses is unreal um, and doesn't get a sniff. Uh, and as I said, it's, it's results based. And, and even today, just I mean, again, Ryan, Ryan's the best place to talk about these kind of things. But I looked at the sending off today, and that that for me typified, I don't care. You know, now I would. Danny Rogers had made maybe two or three incredible saves during the game. Now it's the 95th minute. Sam Cosgrove is through one on one. You know, and he's. He pulls him back, knowing that he's going to get sent off, knowing now that he's maybe going to miss two or three games. Okay, round just, I know you don't want other preferred just to score a goal. And then he scores in the free kick anyway. <laughs> you yeah. know, but obviously he doesn't know that. But I just felt that was a wee back. He brought on this sub, and I'm thinking, even even try and make a slight tackle and make it look as if it was just a, a blatant pull on the back, you know, and, and getting sent off. And that for me, I just a wee bit of ill, Ill discipline that. And I can I can see kind of mirrors the same way, you know, watching Celtic's recent performances, um, creep, creep into Kilmarnock. But again, it's results based, and I, I don't I don't I don't think the board will react. I, I just think they possibly should. I don't think they will. I think they'll, they'll stick with them well into the new year. Um, but as I say, a lot of players are out of contract, and a lot of our better ones as well. Um, I know there's some other clubs sniffing about one or two of them, but as I say. Are we just making change because, and I made this point earlier, and I made no uh, uh, qualms about it. Gary Hulk's now available on a free as such. Mm-hmm. You know, if you were to take him from Livingston, you maybe have to fork out some money. He's there. And 
it's a very, I'm, I'm not, that's just my opinion. That's, it's very mixed between the sets of the Kilmarnock supporters. Um, and I just feel if the, you know, everyone says, because Gary lives in Kilmarnock, played for Kilmarnock, Kilmarnock fan, is he going to get the job? Um, if it's not going to be now, then I would think, well, you know, who, who would they get in? And this is what I've been debating on Twitter this week. It's fine, it's fine to want to get rid of a manager. The, the punters are entitled that, but no one's given me a cast iron concrete names of who they want in. Yeah. You know, I said I said weeks ago when, when I thought Lennon should have went, you know, I gave you Martin and Elon Roy Keane to come in, I gave you Strachan to come in at the end of the season, whatever it was, I'm giving names. Kelly fans want the manager sacked, but I'm not willing to come out and say, well, we want him and we want him. We just, we just want rid of Dyer. Yeah. You know, bonkers. Right. But... And obviously, it was a, another interesting week, but we'll we'll move on to our, our special guest, Ryan McStay. We'll, we'll obviously kind of touch on your career a wee bit. You started out at Falkirk. What was your kind of youth days like there? I was brilliant there. I think I joined, uh, I played in Middlesbrough right up until I was maybe 11, 12, and then uh, me and Dan Barr joined uh, Falkirk for maybe, I think it was under 11s, 12s, and I was there right through to our left to go to Partick Thistle. Uh, when I turned down a contract and left, but nothing but great names. A fantastic club, a massive club, uh, and I played with some fantastic players throughout my time there. A uh, top manager, John Hughes, a guy that's absolutely half his not bonkers. And uh, obviously, Brian Rice, who was assistant manager, who is the biggest influence I've had in my career. Uh, a top, top uh, man and a top, top coach. And uh, that's why I was obviously pleased with the result yesterday. But going back to Falk, it was. It was, it was brilliant playing with top players like uh, Russell Latapi. The guy was honestly unbelievable. Uh, so laid back for the guy that's done played with Porto. Uh, Rangers, Hibs had a fantastic career, but uh, laid back down to earth boy. He was obviously, he took the reserves at Falkirk. Uh, so I obviously came through the youth and then the reserves and he was taking this. He was always there for a chat and kind of took me under his wing. I was known as his boy there. Uh, but what a guy to learn from. But other players there, you obviously Yogi playing. Uh, <laughs> so he used to play in reserve games. He would play sale and he would tell his two certain halves to go there, his two full backs to pull up wide and just give him the ball. And the keeper would give him the ball and he would try a drag back and get the ball to calf him and the guy would get in the score and he'd be like, ah, sorry, and all that. And he would just demand that things off you and obviously took a keen interest in me. And so when he used to go wide, I used to go and get the ball off him. It was just Total football, and it summed me up perfectly, just getting on the ball and making things uh, happen. But the boys running about us, we won the league. Uh, the team was unbelievable. Kev James at the back, yeah. uh, Alan Ferguson, goalie, one of the best I've played with. Yogi, uh, we played a diamond in the middle. Scott McKenzie sitting. Me and John O'Neill, uh, either side, who was a top, top player, had a fantastic career, St. Johnson and Hibs. And then the wee magician in, just in front of us, uh, Latapi, and then you'd... Uh, Andy Thompson, Daryl Duffy and Daniel McBreen up top, uh, scoring goals for fun. So uh, people always ask me, oh, what was it like scoring the goal that won the league for Falkirk? But in all honesty, with, with, the one league, uh, with the league one probably months before that, I just confirmed it, scoring the goal against Ross County. But it was good times. Uh, playing under Yogi, it was always, there was always a story to tell about Yogi. He was half his nut. Uh, He's a story. Obviously. What's the best story for, for, your, time, for your time there? I did another two hours to, to talk about you. He's just a character. He used to come in. We trained at Little Cares when I was a, a youth player. He used to come in. He was mad on weights. So we used to come in in the morning, have a breakfast, go in, do a gym sh- session, go out and train, come back in, do the gym again. So we used to come in. What young boys were doing, obviously, what they do in the gym. He used to turn the lights on, come on with a pair of boxing gloves and just start swinging punches at people. I said, guys, it's seven, 16, 17, 18. He's like, hey, who wants a square go? Just absolutely crazy. But uh, every time we played Hearts, that was obviously interesting with the, the Romano very era. Uh, Yogi can't talk at the best of times, so the team talked when he was trying to say all the names of the Lafayette players was hysterics. Obviously, at Tide Castle, a, obviously, he's a high so he hated it, so he was always intense and why to beat them. And he's trying to say that like, Lafayette players, and we're all just fat meat, Charlie. You know what it's like. <laughs> but, uh, Scotty and Mark will tell you in a changing room if somebody makes up, you're always nudging each other and all that. And, it was absolutely uh, brilliant him trying to announce names, but uh, what a character. I'm, I'm surprised he's out of the game. Right. He's one of the best, well, he is the best manager I've played under. Mm-hmm. Uh, his record speaks for itself. Inverness, obviously, Scottish Cup. Uh, I think 
it maybe had Mitzi Sale taking the Rafe Rovers job at that time yeah. was maybe the wrong option because uh, obviously that put a dent on his CV by relegation but I think uh, he's a big miss to a team definitely yeah, as, you, as you say the, the merry go round Achille Achille a Livy a team like that he'd come in and turn it round tenfold plays football the right way I think he doesn't get the credit that he deserves people see Yogi's a big stupid uh, jovial character uh, but Obviously, playing under him for a number of years, he just it's total football, mm-hmm. playing out for the back and making angles of all. Every time you've got the ball, you've maybe got two and three options. That's the way football should be played. Uh, in Scotland, you see, as me as a centre mid, I'm, I can't tackle. Well, for fuck, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> uh, it was ideal for me playing under a, a guy like that when you're not seeing the ball getting over your head constantly. And the contacts he had at Falkirk are phenomenal. We did Casper Smeichel, uh, Tim uh, Krull, yeah. uh, Stokes, he came up on North for Arsenal, an unknown, 18-year-old, absolute moon man, uh, but what a player, just used to turn up, uh, score goals, when he turned up the first training session, I'm like, who's this guy? Just in the, the box, he's been the ball away for fun. Turning up late for training day, because we used to get fined if he tra- turned up for training. He used to pick up the two Irish boys, Paddy Craig and uh, Stephen O'Donnell, Three and turned up late every day. Uh, no care. Yeah, one day we done. As I say, Yogi was mad on uh, the fitness, so we're walking down uh, to do the blue. We done the yo-yo test, so it's kind of different for the blue test. So we used to do this maybe once a month. So we're walking down. Stokes had just scored back to back hat tricks. Can't remember who against, but then everybody was talking about him. So Yogi was mad on his fitness. So we started doing the yo-yo test, and it's a bit. So once you get to maybe 10, 12, you're starting to jog and that. And Stokes is walking down before that, eating a tunnel, no care. Just walking out, starts hanging with maybe 10, 11, 12. He's like, I don't fancy this. Walks off. Yogi's the arm round and cuddling all that, laughing, joking him. See if it was me or Daz Bar or we Scott in our field, they'd be fucking punching fuck out. <laughs> that's just the way it was. Obviously, Yogi had knew how to manage players. He knew that he had a match with his hands in Stokes. In. Nice. Obviously, he's been on to have a, a good career, probably. He's admits it's sell he's wasted his career, but obviously he's made a bit of money, so and he's played with some top teams and had a good career at Celtic as well. So uh, but I Falk it was a it was fantastic for me playing against uh, playing the Premier League and winning the first division, playing with top top guys. Darren Barr's one of my best mates in football. Nice. Uh, I was delighted to see him kick on and have a career, which he did, obviously going to Hearts. Yeah. So only going home, uh, when they beat Hibs 5 1. So Always people say to me, oh, you maybe you wasted your career, but I'm happy with the career I had, you know what I mean? I'm happy for boys like Darren Barbie, Scotty Arthur, that's what kept on and done well, so, aye, it's good. Brilliant, brilliant. You got any party thistle under Ian McCall, what were your days like there? Aye, it was good, obviously. Uh, Ian McCall was at party uh, Falk when I went in as a first year YTS. Uh, there's a story to that, my brother played with Falk before me for a number of years, and he... Uh, it was just right really, really at the time in Airdrie, well, going bust and Falk at my maybe didn't know if I were going to go up or not, we weren't going to keep the youth system. So my call took over and hey, I was still at school at the time. And hey, I've come back in for school. My brother walked in the door, just been released with Falk. I think my call came in and just released the full team. I think he obviously wanted to bring in like a fair game, Kevin James. Mm-hmm. And then I was going out the door to go up and sign uh, full time with Falk. So uh, one week's day was going out the door and one week's day was going back in. So obviously that was my first initial contact with McCall. Obviously had a fantastic six months. Obviously at Brockville, we beat Hearts in the Cup 4-0. Colin Samuel, uh, Lee Miller, Mark Kerr, that kind of team on Coyle. Yeah. And then obviously left to go to Dundee United. Uh, so I worked under him for six months. He was a top uh, manager then. And then when I was out of the team at Falk, I came back for an injury. I went and loaned him to Queen of the South down there. They had a fantastic six months down there. They were cut adrift at the bottom of the league. We managed to stay up. I think they were 13 points behind. We managed to stay up. And then I went back. I was in the team at Falkirk again. And then he phoned me when he got the job and wanted to make me my first signing. So I said to him about Muller, good mate, Mark Twaddle. So he invited the two of us to come in on the Monday. Again... Typical manager trying to pay any pinch, said the two should come in because you'll get the same deal. So the two, me and Big Mark Todd will walk in his office and he's, he sits down in the office, whatever it was, I can't remember at the time. So me and Big Todd are trying to play, play it cool and all that. We'll let you know and all that. It's maybe a, a bit too low. So we jump out for Hill Road and we're going down towards his car. Phone goes straight away. My call two minutes later. 
Okay, that's okay, that. And so we agreed. Mm-hmm. And the next day, he signed. So that's the kind of boy he was. He's just laid back. He used to turn up with a set of crops on, looking like an absolute tramp. Just used to walk into his, his office. It was like stars in your eyes. <laughs> Sweaty gorgeous. Just used to smoke constantly. But again, going back to his man management skills, he knew how to treat players. He knew when to uh, be harsh on them and when to put a, an arm around the shoulder. And that's how he's been on to have a, a cracking career. But uh, He's not too well with part of it tonight, so hopefully. But again, if I had to pick, obviously I'd pick Falkett when that would any day of the yeah. week. That's, that's my, my second team. I always look out for them. I've always got a soft spot for them. So hopefully they kick on and win that league. But at party, the change in him was absolutely unbelievable. Full of absolute moon men. Uh, Shergar, uh, Ben Wanger, Mark Roberts. Uh, what a character, man. The best I've met in football. Uh, Classing was a good mate. Uh, Jimmy Gibson, Adam Stratton. Uh, these two absolute moon men, Kevin McKinley and Liam Buchanan, used to walk into Far Hall. We used to sit on the left hand side, and they two would be walking in and they'd be in the buff, just shaving each other's pubes and that, and just leaving everyone lying about. Like, what are you doing? And they just two of them didn't care, just absolute <laughs> moon men. Adam Stratton, uh, Mark will tell you this one, this is a good one. So, Adam had obviously a wee bit of a baggage, so things happened, and then obviously McCall said, I've had enough, and obviously got my way and he went to Ross County, but Adam's a top player. Uh, and so they came back down. I think it was a cup game we played at Far Hall. So I'm at the I come at the front area, the front post in a corner. Marco's the front area. Adam Stratton just walks up, taps him. Marco turns around and Adam spits in his face. And Marco just laughs. And I'm like, the fuck's happening here? And that's just the two of them. Just just to walk about and just spit at each other. Just absolute idiots. Uh, but that's the way football was back in the days. Willie Kinnebra, he was a character and all. He came in loan for money. Well, just. Uh, it was good times. Uh, Jimmy Gibson, we uh, had our own wee, obviously, going back in the day, we gambling school we had. Uh, we used to get a, a good few battles with them. Every Tuesday, we used to get training and then go out as a, a team, be a bit of bonding session because we were off in the Wednesday. So it was good times. Uh, and again, maybe that was down, down to McCall getting the right characters in at the time. Yeah. And uh, I think we just missed out in the league. I think it was to, I can't remember who won that league earlier. I think we came second. And then obviously I was in the team again and I left to go to Dumbarton in the January. But uh, fun times at party, a, a, a massive club again and hopefully they pick up starting up league again. Definitely. You touched on your kind of spell at Dumbarton. You had a spell at Dumbarton and Albion Rovers as well. Like, is there any memories for them? Uh, Dumbarton's probably my fondest time since I've went part-time. I absolutely loved the club. Uh, I went there in the January again. I think we were 10 points behind Cowden and Beef in the, the old third division. Jim Chapman, the, the manager at the time, brought in uh, myself, uh, Ross Forbes, who only had a good career in yeah. Motherwell, uh, a few other boys, and we kicked on and won the league. So then we went on to the second division. I was there for another, I think it was two years, and we, we maintained our position in the, the league. And obviously then Dumbarton kicked on again and had a number of years in the, the championship, and they kind of fell away again, I think. Obviously, like all, all the other clubs, have had money issues yeah. again, hopefully... And I see them pick up again. But uh, I love my time at Dumbarton. Uh, just money issues again. I was one of the top earners and the manager at the time, Alan Adamson. I think he made it a cop out. It was one of the times when it was a bad winter. And uh, I was out with a growing injury, but we never played any games. And he tried to make out as if I missed a lot of games through injury and tried to cut my wages in half. Obviously, I wasn't happy with that. So I looked elsewhere. Uh, I actually agreed a deal with Breaking City under Jim Weir. And, uh, there's a story to that, so I, I agreed it with my, my agent, Kevin Drinkle. So anyway, I got me on holiday with my new wife. I say to him, listen, he offered me the same way to was on the Barton. I agree with that, but I'll go on holiday for a week, I'll come back and get it sorted. So anyway, I came back, I phoned Kevin Drinkle saying, listen, let's get the deal done with Breton. I'd already told them Barton I wasn't signing. And uh, my agent phones uh, Jim Weir, and Jim Weir comes out and goes, oh, I thought he didn't want to sign because it was over a week ago. I went and signed uh, Gary Brady instead. So I'm like, fucking mind him not. Like, obviously, I went from having a decent wage at a good club to two weeks before pre-season having nothing at all on the table. No. Again, I was left in limbo and obviously I wasn't going to go back Grover to Dumbarton because obviously I'm not that kind of guy. So I ended up signing my hometown team, Albion Rovers, and uh, what a season it was. No. I went for a right good wage to <laughs> nearly pay to play. Uh, but I wouldn't change it for a while. Played under obviously the crazy guy, Paul Martin, who was uh, he was a top man, top manager as well. And against all odds, we stayed up. Uh, we beat Sunderland in the playoffs. Uh, 
and some uh, cracking characters here, Kieran Dorn again, another one of my good mates, uh, Tony Stevens, top, top player, John Gamble, obviously a character in the game as well. Uh, so, fun memories playing my hometown team. Obviously, that's a team that I've always, I grew up around the corner from. Again, maybe before my time, they were a laughing stock. Uh, Scottish football and uh, Paul Martin kind of changed that. Mm-hmm. Got his own boys in and played some uh, good football in the place it's called the San Siro, but mm-hmm. it's an absolute bog here. So, obviously, you need to play football a certain way, and he got them up the leagues and then obviously left due to his, his own health. So, yeah. he's not come back into the game since. And it's, it's, it's bad seeing Albion Rovers in the, the way they are. Obviously, hopefully, Reedy, I used to be Reedy's boot boy, so hopefully, Reedy turns it around and gets some uh, back up fight because. I've played in the lone league with BSC. See if I've been over dropping that league. You won't see them again in the, the senior leagues. The money in that league's frightening. We can't hearts. Uh, East School Bride. So the likes of the aim breaking the figure down. We won't see them again for a number of years. So hopefully, I think for Albion Over's sake, the only saving grace is Breaking City, uh, which looks like they're in less. We do get some more players in, in January, but yeah. uh, the budget's not there. So hopefully, they can just kick on and maybe grab eight and ninth and then maybe kick on again next year. But there's no money, especially with COVID, there's no clubs, especially no fan-based clubs that like are with need fans through the door. Definitely. Sponsorships, and they're not getting that because obviously companies are going bust right, left and centre, don't they? Definitely. We'll move on to your days at air. I want to bring Wilson in on this because a few questions to ask you for a, a third party. <laughs> uh, to be honest, Matt, when I spoke to Matt yesterday, he spoke very highly of you in terms of, you know, as a player, your ability, you know. and But he just wondered, did, did um, getting the job as Sonia Jackson in EastEnders? Who's getting back stop? He's talking about my brother. My brother gets called Sonia Jackson. That was my <laughs> brother he played to. I can't do it. <laughs> it's the first thing he said, when I texted him, he said, who's coming on at the time next day? Say this. Say <laughs> this. <laughs> <laughs> no, but to be, to be fair, he did, he did, he did speak very, very highly. I mean, Mark doesn't give out praise, as you know. Yeah. Uh, he, he's, he was the man who always used to say to me, you're one of the most gifted players that I've played with and things like that. And that's why I think he took me to air. Obviously, it was, a, it, was, it was a massive club. Again, it was a good change in him. Fans were a very demanding bunch. Uh, obviously, again, we, we had a right good team there. We'd, Boy, Ozzy McCann made him off. He's still there, absolute legend, that boy. Yeah. Uh, I need a legend. Uh, who else did we have? We David Sinclair in the middle of the park. Uh, we had a right good time. We were the favourites for the league, but could you say for full time? Mm-hmm. Then, uh, pre-season, I can remember beating Motherwell 4-0 and think to ourselves, we've got a right good team here. But it just didn't work out. I think Marco had met his seller. I spoke to Marco on several occasions because players used to come to me and say, listen, you need to tell him to take a step back, he was a gaffer and coming into the changing room with slotting boys and I think he was a player again and once you become the manager, you need to take a step back and I would go and see him about, listen Mark, you need to take a step back, mate, you need the gaffer now, I oh, know, I know, I know, and then two minutes later in slotting people again. So I think, uh, obviously I've watched a few interviews and I do agree, if he could get his own men in for the start, we a better, a better budget, he could have done better things because there's a massive club. Uh, and I've got a keen interest in him because one of my, my best mates is a gaffer there, Mark Kerr, a fellow mm-hmm. Bridge boy. So I've got a keen interest in the club now, him and Mick there. So hopefully Marco can get the club. Uh, maybe I think it's a bit much challenging. I think they're maybe sitting mid table now. They had a bad result yesterday, but hopefully Marco in his first job can uh, do well with the club and get them up. But going back to Marco, he's one of the best guys I've met in football. <clears throat> uh, him as a player, one of the best I've played with. Unbelievable. Him and Simon Donnelly at Party Thistle, where I didn't even play with. Get the ball and just whip it in the corner and the turn and be there. Uh, but what a player, what a finisher. And one of the best guys to have in a change room. Absolutely. Well, that's that's just what I'm going to touch on. I, I don't know if you you watched the interview with Scott McLaughlin. Aye, Scotty's another one. Scotty's probably <laughs> one of the best in the change room on all TikTok. He's, the two of them together were brilliant. But we, we, asked, we asked Scott a question about why did it not work for market here? You know why? And Scott gave his own personal account, and that's that's fine. But ah, what, 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 <laughs> do you think Mark could have done any more with the tools he was given it here? I don't know. I think obviously the first season I was there, I was only there for a year, so I can only comment on that. I think we finished sixth or seventh 
the team we had, we should have been well up the league. We should have been playoffs at least, but it just didn't work out for him. Uh, I think, obviously, it's well documented who had done his right-hand man and uh, people have said, but I won't get into anything like that, but I think Marco knows his sale if he could bring, if he could do it again. Maybe he likes Andy Mullen coming for the start. Obviously, very experienced coach, but going back to Marco, his training was brilliant. See, when he, he took training, it was all, it's like, what I'm doing now, I'm a uh, player assistant manager at the Rock. I like to just get the boys, uh, we boxes to start with, passing possession, crossing finishing, I think nowadays coaches think, you know what I mean, they're landing a plane, there's cones everywhere, you know what I mean, it's, it's not like that, boys don't enjoy it, obviously I've, I'm the link between the boys and obviously uh, the manager of the round, you know that, it's, the boys just more above them, so going back to Marco Ayer, his training, his training was top notch, maybe took a back seat a wee bit more for the players, I think, uh, he wanted to be the Mark Roberts, say, the Partick Thistle and Airdrie and Falkirk days and slotting people, I think as a manager, you've got to let your assistant do that. And I think maybe that's where he went wrong with who he had at that time. Uh, but it was a top change. You know, obviously the, the, the kit man at the time, Kerzo, he was he was absolutely unreal there. He could tell you a few stories about that. Aye, uh, what a guy he is. So could he do something different? And you could always say you do something different, but at the time with the players he had, we should have done better in this first season. So it's the players' fault. It's Marco's first year in charge, obviously. I think he was just maybe late 30s at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but as I say, the, the players we had, uh, we should have done better. But then I think he did another two year. And obviously the results get better and better and they make the playoffs. But then again, you're judged at a team like Air to, to be challenging, especially in that league for titles. And uh, obviously Marco went and done well at Queen's Park again and they've went for another. Again, every time somebody maybe comes in with more money, they want their own guy in. And Marco was kind of shafted again there. Uh, but I think he's definitely got what he gave to football, maybe if he doesn't want to go to sell, he's definitely he's made up, he's tailor made for assistant manager, definitely. But the way he is, you know what I mean? So, I think he's definitely got more to give. I think he's still playing, I think he's about 52 now or something like that, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Probably still uh, talking away in the juniors, but he's he can definitely be assistant manager because I think you need a good link between the players and the manager, and I think he'd be tailor made for that. Mm-hmm. That's quite interesting you say that because. Obviously, I, I, I was a footballer the whole time. I've known him as, as, a, as a mate and all that. And I say that to him quite a lot, you know, for the future. I suppose, I mean, I, I agree. He was completely shafted by Queen's Park. I, I make no bones about that. And I always say to him, do you want to be a manager or do you want to be an assistant manager? Because, because I, I, some, I sometimes feel, and he wouldn't mind me saying this, I sometimes feel he wants he wants to work with the better players. I mean, I can tell a quick, a quick funny story. Like, this, this just sums him up. Um, he was doing his coaching badges and I think he had to do excellent a CPD or practice them, whatever it was for his assessment. Yeah. But the season had finished. Um, he's like, I'm not going to do it, I'm going to do it. And at that time, I was coaching an amateur football team in, in, uh, in Comarna. So I said, why don't you just come up and coach us? I'll make sure there's 18 boys. That'd be brilliant, that'd be brilliant. Right? So I say to the boys, say, look, the guy's coming around, he's doing his coaching badges. Just do what he says and we'll get a game at the end. Right? So he comes in you know, no qualms, start slaughtering folk right for the off, absolutely destroying these boys, right? <laughs> he, plays a, he plays the first pass, and the, the centre midfielder's going to make an angle to go in the ball, and the centre midfielder just stands, stands dead still like that. He's like, what are you doing, son? <laughs> don't tell me you're doing. He's, Would you do that on a Saturday, just stand there and feed the ball? He says, no, we've never been moving, we're moving. Right? <laughs> so that, that, was, that was as good as it got. That was as good as it got. So, after about 30 seconds, he's like, ah, you're shite. Oh, for shite. me, aye. aye. That's he's like, let's, a, chill. let's do a shooting drill. So he sets up this shooting drill and he demos it. Right now, the, the fella we had in goals, Gary, Gary Murdoch, give him a wee name check, smashing amateur goalkeeper, smashing. Right? So Matthew is the first one, laces this thing right in the top corner. So that's how you do it. So the next maybe 20, 30 shots are over the bar, over the fence, wide. Gary doesn't make a save. He's like, you're absolutely shite. I'm joining <laughs> in. Right? I kid you not, honest to God, there's 15 boys there. I think he had about seven shots in a row in each top corner. Right? So you know what goalkeepers are like? The goalies start ah, 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 kicking the post and all that. So I know for sure. 
So, so it now gets to the stage they're actually getting the goal is getting raging, and he's going Gary. See when he passes this ball, it's going in the right hand side top corner. So Gary's taking a step to his leg, get, get there, and he's pinging it. He can't save it in them. Gloves off, just walked off. <laughs> Ah, he's up there with the best finishes I've played with. He, he reminds me, obviously, we were in my early days at Bravo, Old Coyle. Yeah. Never seen Old Coyle hit a hard shot. It was just kind of into the bottom corners, and Mark was kind of like that. Uh, but I top boy, top boy. You could do a full hour on his stories alone. Who was obviously, the best, was the best he, story if you're thinking? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> the he, he touched, touched on it the last one, we, I think it was Trouts it was on. Aye. We took a second prize with me, Kearney. <laughs> uh, we, we Paul Kearney smashing boy but obviously wired up different to everybody else but uh, it was a night that Neil Lennon got attacked in the, the stand I think we were out all day short at Partick so again I can't remember what club we're in so we got into the toilet it was me David Rousin and Marco and we've all been there there's a glass just sitting there in the arena so everybody's pissed on it as normal <laughs> and uh, so we're like fuck it mum we'll get somebody so it was me Kearney's birthday two days before or something like that so we're like mum we'll get me Kearney so somebody laughs at out. I think it was Rouser or something like that. So Marco goes out. He's like, oh, happy birthday, me man. Happy birthday. Down it, down it. Me Kearney does that. We're like, it's about that size. He started gulping it and he pissed. He obviously realises straight away. So he's drinking his piss. It's just all over his shirt. So we're obviously fucking in stitches, but obviously the wee man doesn't find it funny. So he drops a glass and kind of punches, slaps Marco. So we're all hysterics. So... The wee man, I, think he, I don't know if he started greeting, but he ran out the pub and we were like, for fuck's sake. So me and Big Mark Todd will walk out, try to calm him down, and Big Alan Archibald comes out, obviously the club captain. He kind of pins him up and he's like, don't you ever hit one of your teammates, like, hey, no matter what they do, he's fucking covered in piss. So anyway, we go. So Marco took a second prize for that. So anyway, we get into the town, get into social, and uh, Charlie Adams up at the bar, and I've known Charlie for years, playing against him through the years, so I'm up talking about him, me Kearney, just there's no filter with the guy. He's got piss all down, he's fucking shouting, he's shouting. Charlie Adams, obviously the songs that the Selic fans sing to Charlie Adams, all that, you're a blah, 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 and I'm, I'm at the Charlie, just, just forget him and all that, just forget him, but he just kept going on and on. Closer you get, Charlie Adams like, what the fuck is that smell? Fuck is somebody stinking of piss, me Kearney, I'm <laughs> in social, piss stained fucking shirt. Uh, but again, that was just Marco and uh, Rouse on the boys at the party. It was just absolutely unbelievable getting somebody to drink piss. But that's just the way the uh, football was these days. You, you couldn't do that when you get to jail. Nah, I know. So the YTS days were the, the best uh, days of your life. But if you do that nowadays, obviously you get, you get pulled up. But uh, they were good times. Right, Ryan, were you at party when Stephen O'Donnell was there? Stephen O'Donnell. Plays with Motherwell, come on, that player. No, Please. no, I was before that. No, I was before, before that. that. Aye, aye. aye. I thought he's a top player. He's done well for his sale, obviously. International recognition, you know, he's, he's done well for his sale, aye. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's fantastic. See, just while we're on that, Wilson, just before we can ask Ryan about Rettie's career, well, we talked about the text you sent us half an hour before the, the end of the Celtic game. Well, if you want me to show me the text that you put on your, your chat, I, I don't mind. <laughs> if you want to hang me out... <laughs> Frimpong and Frimpong and Johnson uh, is like Frimpong and Johnson would be like bringing me and you on for Manny and Salah. Aye, I, <laughs> I, I, I am not. I again, and it's going again. You'll get criticised for this the Celtic show, but it's good that Ryan's on from Celtic supporter. <laughs> again, absolutely amazed by the substitutions today. Now, I, and I've, if you've listened to the show, Ryan, you'll know that I've, I've said on several occasions that Frimpong is the worst player in the SPL. <laughs> Amazes me how they didn't sign Steve, because that, that was the talk at Rugby Park, yeah, that Steve O'Donnell would go to Celtic. Yeah. Fine. Um, and Frimpong and Laxalt coming on was, was, was the most bizarre substitutions I've ever seen. And I agree with you. I do agree with you. No, no offence. And I, again, and I hope it comes back and bites me, but how Scott Brown stayed on that pitch for a hundred and whatever it was, five minutes. He, I'm sorry, an unbelievable player for his country and his club, but he's finished. He's absolutely finished. I mean, I know he an assist for the third goal. Um, but and again, this is this is what does, does Neil Lennon and John Kennedy do they see a totally different game to what everyone else has seen? I think that's the main thing with the Celtic fans maybe the last few months it's his team selections maybe going back to the Rangers game where he gave out I think he gave out four debuts and six players that 
maybe hadn't been playing and got flung in and we didn't have a shot on target. I think it's kind of stumbled on for them. Uh, every time the team comes out, you're like, oh, what's, what's happening here? And then, as you say, uh, selection's coming off the bench. Griffiths, for me, would have been the first one on. Gives you a wee bit of injection, gives you a wee bit of life and obviously a goal for it. And then you see Frank Pong and Lark's out coming on. Uh, Frank Pong, I, I know where you're coming from, but there is something there. Obviously, he's got pace. Maybe one of the ones, if he didn't have pace, he'd be, he'd be nowhere near Celtic Park. But I think... He's another one who'll probably kick on and get a move again. That's just the way it is. We, we fast he, players he, make a he career. Moves, he moves past players, then doesn't he cross? Aye. He turns back and his knee confidence in his left-hand side, so my back back at the halfway line. I know, but seeing his defence, see maybe the last couple of months, he's going up the line and he's looking at he's got Edward standing there before defenders. You know what I mean? That's maybe Celtic's downfall. When you get two strikers back in the box, Griffiths, a six, six-yard penalty box striker, will get you goals. Uh, I said it today when I was in work watching the game, even Greg Taylor's going up, he's looking up and he's maybe got Edward and maybe Evan Usher in the box. Isn't Celtic should be flooding that box with, with all sorts, maybe four or five players getting in, but mm-hmm. just maybe lack of confidence and players know, uh, players playing with Anderson. Mm-hmm. I think, I mean, uh, I, I, don't get me wrong, I was surprised that Taylor played. I mean, I'm, I'm as a big fan of his, he was fantastic mm-hmm. at Kilmarnock. And I think he forgot Celtic were playing in green and white today. I don't think he made one complete pass. His defence for the boys' goal was, was, was crazy. I think he's better than Black Salt, better than Ball and Golly. And he was the day I'm looking going, what's happened to this kid? But I Aye. think China's just, China's just, just confidence, though. Aye, because if I was dropped for Black Salt, I'd be looking at Black and I think that's what Celtic's problem. I'm going to be honest here, he's never in a million years Celtic class, the boy Greg Taylor. I think that's what Celtic's problem is this season. Uh, ball and goalie, lacks out, you're right. Uh, the keepers, the three of them, aren't Celtic class. Uh, the centre halves, Big Julian, obviously six foot five, whatever he is, and players at five foot ten are out jumping. Uh, Duffy, I think he has been used to playing the Premier League because a defending 18 yard box, just going one of things. So up at Celtic, you're playing in the halfway line. So he's, he's getting done with things like that and behind and he's not quick enough to play. I think that's maybe why we went back to a three and it still didn't work out for us. Uh, but I, I can see where you're coming from. I think that's why there's a major rebuild at Celtic come the end of the season. I think there's going to be a money one come January. I mean, I, I, I'll be honest, I, I, I honestly totally disagree. No, not just for you, but a lot of the Celtic fans, I think Greg Taylor's an easy target because it comes from a... 100%. A long, but 100%. He was, he was Comandant's best player when Kilmarnock were playing brilliant under Stevie Clark, you know, and at, at peak times in Celtic's business in the last, don't know, 10, 15 years has been signing the best players from the opposition, you know, uh-huh. like Lee Griffiths or Scott Brown, etc. Uh-huh. And again, I always, I always think, and I, I, rem- I remember this clearly as a younger person supporting Kelly. I don't know if you know, do you know Martin Baker that played with St. Murnay and Kilmarnock? Ah, uh-huh, yeah. Well, where are our tickets? Where? In the main stand. Martin Baker was a left back and Bobby Williamson used to absolutely destroy him every single game. Okay. And I wonder if Greg Taylor suffers from that because on the left-hand side that most of the fans are. And is, is he lacking confidence? Because the punters are on his case going, oh, well, they only came for Kelly, so he's rubbish. Yeah, but, it's, okay. it's an easy target. It's for, obviously, going back to when I played at Falkirk, you can see when you come through the youth, you're an easy target. That's just the way it is. And the phone boys get let away with more things. That's just the way it goes. But... Uh, that's why I think there's going to be a major rebuild at, at Celtic maybe come into the season maybe replace the manager and, uh, maybe a I, I, I said to you, they need to sign Fraser Forster on the 1st of January and start him in the 2nd I 100% agree with you 100%. We'll go, we'll go talking about that. Kelly uh, my best mate with Stevie Murray with John Kim <laughs> Stevie again I, again I, Character. I don't think it worked for Stevie I mean obviously his technical ability was but again, a different manager maybe have got more. I think if you were under six foot four under Jim Jeffries, you weren't going to play every week. <laughs> and get a game, and I mean that that was at the time. I, I when Bobby Wilson left and Jeffries and come in, that just started Commander's deterioration. You know, in my opinion, there was a wee bit of light under you know Mick Sue, Kenny Shields won a trophy, and then the whole lot Johnston. Oh my goodness, man. We must have been through about 17,000 players. You maybe got a game there if you want <laughs> at one stage. But Stevie, when he burst onto the scene, and it was good for Stevie because we kind of used to 
at the time when Kelly won the Scottish Cup, it was Bagan and Buck. Yeah. And liked a, a winger, you know. And Stevie fitted perfectly into that mould. Um, Probably the best I've played. He was, he was unreal. He's uh, still best. playing the 35s, is he not still? Ah, he's still playing with Hamilton and I over 35s. But I, I saw something on Twitter one night. It was a team photo. Uh, oh, my goodness. He's got about four chins, man. He has a Chinese every second night, I think. <laughs> well, to be fair, I, again... Kilmarnock started a, a kind of former players club type thing that do the half time draw. I came down and done a half time draw, I remember. I came down last season. So, again, I am, I, I've got two young boys, so we sit maybe three rows for the front so they can get a good view and all that, just to the maybe right of the dugouts. So all these players start congregating, and my kids, when they're only uh, eight and nine, I go, who's that? And I say, oh, there's you know, Alan Mahood and um, Jimmy Clark was assistant man as he played with Kelly. And he goes, who's that? I'm going, Oh, I don't know who that is, isn't it? I don't know who that is. So I say, I say, my, my brother, pal, I say, oh, who's that? that we you could you see him? I'm saying, I'm saying, Char- Charlie, who's that? Who's that? And he's he's a massive Kelly fan. Charlie's going, I don't know. So it was it was actually annoying as that much. We put it on our Facebook page. <laughs> who's that? And it was uh, it was a man of fans. Is that Stevie Murray? And I genuinely couldn't believe it. Like uh, genuinely couldn't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're saying, but as I say, if he's still performing at 35, then fair play. Ah, he still, he still takes a push out of him on a Friday night. Again, if he's one of these boys, if it was a foot taller, he wouldn't have been playing with Kelly. Uh, yes, Ryan, see, just before we, we got into fan questions, what was your spell like in Northern Ireland? Again, loved it. Uh, it was after I left Air United, obviously, uh, a chance came up again with John Joyce, who was assistant manager at Arnhem Athletic under Jim Chapman. Uh, a lot of time for me, Joyce, as well. He phoned me out the blue saying that obviously he'd like me to join Annan, but there was maybe a possibility going to Porter down in time, son. Do so I took that up and went over and played a trial game for them uh, against a conference team for England. Done well, set up two goals. I think we won 3 1. So uh, the manager at the time, Ronnie McFall, absolute character. Uh, he's like a legend over Northern, Northern Ireland. Manny, Sir Alex's best pals. Uh, he phoned me after the game and said that they were in a bit of, I think they were cut under restraint. They couldn't sign any players. So he's like, I want to sign you or something like that. So I was like, all right, what happens to you? He's like, I'll get you a phone in two weeks. So again, I held off, held off, because I wanted to try something new. And uh, again, so two weeks passed and Annan wanted to sign me and then Irvin Meder came. They were, no way, they were flinging the money about. So yeah. I went and spoke to the, the, the gaffers down there uh, and... They offered me a good deal and I was like, I need to take it. So I took it and then literally a week later, Ronnie phones me. Eh, I want to sign you that so as we can sign players, blah, blah, blah. Offered me a right good deal. And basically I was only flying over there, playing the game and flying back. It was mental. So I had to go and speak to Avon Meadow. They weren't best pleased. I had to give them my sign-on feedback, which I wasn't happy about. Eh, good job, I never spent it. Eh, but again, I was flying over. It was, it was ideal. I was getting the flight over sometimes half 10, half an hour flight, getting picked up at the airport. Took to the game, they were paying for all my, my flights, my food, which probably the financial strain around probably causing my food bill. Uh, so I had to keep all the receipts. Uh, every home game, I just hand them in, play the game, go get a shower. Five o'clock, took to the airport, gave my money, and then flew home. I'd done that every week, uh, trying to grab the rovers across the road for me. So it was it was ideal. It was good because you were playing against different teams, different players. It's, mm-hmm. it's a bit monotonous when you're playing. Obviously, I've played the lower leagues for the last maybe 10, 15 years. They're playing against the same players, same teams all the time. So we go to play derby games against Glentorn on Sky Sports again. Uh, and obviously, the boys were fantastic with me because I say I was coming over and uh, playing most weeks and boys are sitting on the bench, turning up twice a week and just a, a wee idea for Scotland's turning up and just taking their, their position in the team. But fond memories. But then again, when it got into winter time, the flights changed. I was getting the flight at eight o'clock and sitting in airports for three hours myself, yeah. uh, freezing. So and then wasn't getting back to uh, ten o'clock at night. So it took its toll at the end up. And uh, but I'm glad I did it. And then I came back signed with Annan uh, again. Uh, probably one of my best times in football under Jim, uh, Jim Chapman. We Joyce was probably should have won the league. Yeah. And then I had a two fantastic years there. And then my wife was pregnant with our first kid. So me and Big. Uh, Peter Wellis made the choice to come back up the road and our joint managers with Shettleson. Again, fantastic six months at Shettleson. Yeah, I think our record speaks for itself. We, we got up to the first final in the 42 year. 
uh, our top of the league. I think we'd have run away with the league, but again, I'm not going to get into that. We were owed money off the club and we decided to obviously part company in January and most of the players came ways. Uh, I think 12 players left ways the night we designed and they went for eight points clear at the top to finish in seventh. So, and then obviously I kicked on and went to BSC under my good mate Swifty, mm-hmm. uh, who, by the way, is a top, top manager. I think he's definitely got uh, the minerals to obviously work up higher. Uh, he's took a team like BSC, who were basically paying win bonuses when we signed mm-hmm. to compete with the likes of Kelly Hearts, uh, East Coast Bride on a, a yearly basis, and probably when me and Stevie Murray signed in the first year. We kind of flung the league away in February, March time. East Coast Bride went on and won it. So I think definitely uh, Stephen Swift uh, definitely deserves a chance to get up the leagues, definitely. League one, league two, definitely. Mm-hmm. And what about your time now at St Rocks? What's, uh, how's that going for you? I love it. Again, going back to, I took time out. My second uh, my second born was two months premature, so I left the BSC in the November time to spend more time with my family. Mm-hmm. Uh, I missed it. I missed, obviously, the banter. Uh, I missed playing. So I decided I was going to get back into it, and the chance kind of arose to come back into player coach with St Rocks. And then the day after I agreed to do that, Swifty phoned me and asked me to be his assistant manager. But again, with my shifts at work, I do early back shifts, so... I couldn't commit to it at the time, so I agreed to go to St Rocks as a player coach. I uh, loved it. Uh, it's, a, it's obviously it's known as a mini Celtic. The, the playoff of Celtic went really well. Uh, obviously, the stadium's called the James McGrory Stadium. Uh, so I was a player coach for the first year, and then Paul the Gaffer asked me to be the player assistant there. Again, it's it's not ideal because I miss most every second week because of match shift. I make all the games because I get my, my shifts covered, but ideally, I'm like Marco. I want to get back in as a a number one myself because I loved it at Shettleson. Mm-hmm. I loved the, uh, the intensity of 24 hours. It's non-stop to get players in uh, training. But just to now with my shifts at work, I can't apply for any jobs because I can't commit to every week. So I'm trying to sort that out with my work just now. Because uh, I think I've got the, obviously, the knowledge, the contacts definitely make a go at uh, maybe starting the, maybe the, the West of Scotland, maybe work my way up. I don't know. Uh, but I've definitely got uh, ambitions to definitely get back in as a assistant manager somewhere and maybe as my my own person maybe in a couple of years. Brilliant. It's been absolutely brilliant to be on, Ryan. It's been really, really great talking to you. Just well Wilson, I think wants to ask a couple of things. Ryan, uh, again, I look at guys like, like Mark and yourself and how difficult it is, you know, from playing, you know, big teams. Listen, they are big teams, Falkirk Party. Even I was a professional football to a big team. And I look how hard it is for you to get back in as such. Because uh, I, I use the example, you know, quite quite a lot with Mark. I look at somebody like Ian Durant. Now, look what he did for um, the game and coaching and whatnot. And with the greatest respect, he, he's at East Cobride as an assistant manager. Now, and I know you can't just give someone a job because they're a big name, but I'm just wondering how... How hard you're going? I mean, you're mentioning the. Uh, is it Stephen Swift that was other medal manager? Is that the same fella? Ah, he was a uh, Cobundi in that. Aye, aye. Oh, he's, aye. He's, 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 that's what I'm saying. He's done the groundwork and worked his way up. Yeah. He's actually so, like BSC. I'm at, well, I'm looking at a guy, for example, like it's a shame Shankers isn't he on. Shankers manager Tommy Sloan. Uh, a legend of the game, aye. But he's never ever went to a professional club. Yeah. And I'm looking at you guys now. With the greatest respect, I think you could possibly win 20 trophies with St Rocks. And would you think you would ever get a job based on that, getting back into professional football? I don't, it would be hard. I think I think I've got a lot of contacts in the game, so it might be different for me. Maybe calling on a favour for somebody to maybe try and get in that, try and go on the ladder as such. But at the moment, I can't, I can't do that because obviously my work situation. So I would be more than willing to to get maybe as an under 14s, 15s and try and work my way up. Uh, but I know what you're saying. Somebody like Swift has maybe played his whole career, maybe at Stranra and then maybe going junior. That is hard to make that step up, but it absolutely annoys me when maybe, especially in the lower leagues, maybe Championship down in League Two, you see somebody getting sacked. It's just the same guy comes back in. It's like a merry go around. He's been mm-hmm. sacked five or six times and he just gets another job instead of getting somebody that's up and coming, fresh ideas. Uh, plays football the right way, just doesn't get a chance. Uh, I, I totally agree with you that there's mm-hmm. definitely coaches out there, managers that deserve a chance, and it's just the same people that just go around the medical round. It's, it's no right. 
as I say, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a big believer, and I know it's totally dictated by finances. And, and I think I think that I mean I don't know so much what's happening at Celtic, but I know Rangers have guy or did have guys like uh, the fella Gilma, Loving Krantz, all these guys in coaching these youth teams. And in my opinion, you know, professional clubs like Kilmarnock, Hibs, all these teams in the SPL, there has to be some sort of way of getting guys like you know yourself that have played a high level of football your whole life to start and make and make it a job. As such, you know, full time under 14s, 15s coaches. I know they've done a wee bit of work with uh, James Green, does the one in Kilmarnock. I think Tam McMartin with these performance skills. No, it's a you know, that does. I, I, I think these these are the jobs that guys, you know, need to be getting straight into from the minute they finish playing. Now, I know everyone, not everyone wants to be a coach, but if it's something you want to do, then there has to be some sort of pathway for me for players that finish the game. Because as we've seen in, in the press and all things about mental health issues, etc., and you, you made the point earlier, Ryan, about you missed it. Mm-hmm. You missed the dressing room, you missed the banter. I'm sure you probably got a lot of banter in your uh, day job. <laughs> uh, <laughs> getting, getting the likes of you guys involved at academy level football, if if you want to, you know, if if you want to. Um, and as you said, you know a lot of people, I'm dare say if you said to Brian Rice, can I come in and coach your fifth? They would say, absolutely. Uh, yes. I, I, I still think there needs to be something in place where if I, if, I, if my kid's ever good enough um, and he turns up and he says, oh, there's my coach. Who's, who, who's Ryan and Mark? Well, Ryan played for Falkirk, Partick, whoever. Mark played for Kelly or whoever. They think, oh, brilliant. Yeah, exactly. I'm not, I'm not necessarily they make the best coaches, but... You, you imagine, I mean, again, a wee, a wee story, there's a wee fella, he's nine, and he goes to school with my kids, and he, he signed a contract for the Youth Academy at Rangers. So he's on his Zoom call the other night, um, you know, he's got the forms in front of them, blah, 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 and he's got his picture of his youth coach, and I think it's maybe the, is it maybe the Craig Mulholland or something. Yeah, that's it. And then within 30 seconds... James Tavernier and Stephen Gerrard jump on the Zoom call for a boy that's an under 10s goalkeeper mm-hmm. and he's signing his form and there's Gerrard and Tavernier. Now that makes that wee boy feel dollars. And I just think, and I know that's a high level one, but that wee boy will walk in and say, Dad, my, my, my coach is some guy called Peter Lovencrantz. Who's that? And the dad Aye. will be like, oh yeah. my, oh my, even if he's a Celtic, oh my God, Peter Lovencrantz. No, I, don't I, just, I just feel these guys... Need, need to there needs to be some progress because so many guys are falling at the game mm-hmm. and, and not doing anything and it's affecting their mental health and issues issues that surround all that. Um, and as I say, especially in this day and age, obviously we we have the start of March. I think a yeah. lot of young boys, maybe if you maybe eight up to sixteen, or maybe lose interest in football with all these restrictions that are happening in football. Yeah, yeah you can back to yeah. Paul. Yep. They've wiped away their, their, their youth system, which was one of the base when I was yeah. going through the youth. I, I probably just missed it. I think maybe three, three or four years after me, if you made 10 passes, you were getting a move to Swansea. I think I just missed out on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, young boys were coming through youth, we Scotty Arfield and things like that, and then they've just wiped it away. Uh, I think, give credit, obviously, after what happened yesterday with Ross County, you've got to give them credit because I think they try and promote within. Yeah. Uh, obviously, Scott Boyd, I played with party, he's been back up as a I think he's been back up as a managing director. Mm-hmm. Uh, retired for football for Kelly. I'll be back up there. So I think they look after their own. And I totally agree with you. Teams uh, need to look after their former players, definitely, if they've got a keen interest. And will that be... Because I've done my UFAB licence. It's no cheap. You know what I mean? And if you want to go and do your, your A licence, you're talking maybe another two and a half, three grand. Boys haven't got that money. I know clubs maybe aren't a position now to pay for that. But if it's... Maybe the likes of Falk uh, open back up the youth academy and maybe bring a few boys back, like Dan Barr, uh, who was obviously he's the same situation as me, the way he's worked. He was assistant manager at Arnon, he's took a step away, the way, but he's looking to get back in uh, his, himself. Uh, likes of him coming back, uh, a legend at the club, obviously played with Hearts, he's a big name, somebody like that they could, uh, the, the boys could look up, up to. I definitely agree with it. Mm-hmm. Definitely. We've just got to have time for a few fan questions. I just want to ask uh, the first one for Stephen Nicol. Uh, Wilson, who thinks going to win the League Cup? Obviously, there was a few a few massive results during the week. Obviously, there's a man beating Rangers 
Who do you think's going to win the League Cup? A- absolutely no interest. Four, <laughs> four Mickey Mouse teams. I don't care who wins it. Absolutely. Abs- I, 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 do, I do find it quite quite amusing, and I don't want to put your company under pressure here, Scott, but I laugh how they, they invented this uh, Premier Football Channel, or whatever it's called, and they're charging mere money on top of your BT, your Sky, your everything else to watch football. And they've got four dumplings in the uh, in the semi final, so maybe they'll be paying to watch that. To be honest, um, but um, I know I know big Craig Samson at Hibs, and um, that's possibly my only link. So I'll, I'll go with Hibs to win it for big Sammy. Uh, I'll go with Hibs. Uh, Jacko, I'll travel with Jacko for three of it. Uh, Falkirk, Jack Ross. So I'll be I'll be hoping he pulls out of that. He's obviously top boy. And he's he's kicked on. He's maybe only he's another one, for example. Six, seven years ago, he was assistant manager at Dumbarton. Now, look at him now, he's one of the most sort of, he's getting talked, spoke about maybe taking over at Celtic, just, just shows you what can happen in a, a short number of years. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have thought he'd be taking Craig Sampson there, if that's true. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm in man, isn't he? Oh, great guy. Uh, nice to meet you. Uh, Ryan. Ryan, who starts the old firm game in Celtic for Celtic Nets? And goals? Yeah. I know, Wilson, I know Wilson's answer. <laughs> <laughs> eh, I think obviously he's going to keep the boy Hazard in for the next game on Wednesday, so it just depends on how he does. Hopefully he kicks on. Obviously he's a young boy and he made a mistake today for the third goal, but he redeemed himself. Everybody's just going to remember him eh, saving two penalties and winning himself to the cup. So I think if he plays the next three games and doesn't make any howls or gets injured, I think he's got number one jersey now, so I'll go with, with Hazard. Who you got, Wilson? Just remind us. Um, I'll go. I'll go with Amson. Scott Bain. Yeah. I, I, I think they'll have a, a wee bit of a merry go round. I think they might be trying to take this boy out the limelight a wee bit. Um, and just say, is it four games in twelve days or something? Nah, they play Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday. Aye, there, 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 there might slightly be a wee bit of rotation. Um, and again, I, I, I'm surprised, to be honest, Ryan, you said that at the start, none of the goals are good enough. I think Scott Bain is good enough. Um, but he's, but again, you're comparing it with likes of Craig Gordon, who was... St- ah, he plays a foster, you know, goes like that. Exactly, you're comparing it with that. But out of the three, I do think Scott Bain's the best. And you have to go to Ibrooks. And I would agree with Scott Bain's the best out of three, man. Hopefully, hopefully they play a, you know, a 10-1 um, and try and get a point. Because I, if they if they lose that game, then that's that's capish. I agree with you. I agree with you. Ryan, I've, all, I've got a question here. Have you still got Sonia Jackson's trump? <laughs> <laughs> Who's that for Marco again? Yeah. <laughs> he's a clown. Yeah, he's still my you do. <laughs> I'm going to take some after this and that. Brilliant. Final question. What happens to Neil Lennon if he loses the old firm game? Uh, I think the league's over if we, we lose the old firm game. So I don't like anybody to lose their job, especially a legend like Lennon. It's brought so much as a player and a manager. But maybe if we could be off Rangers, maybe it's a rebuild and you get somebody in that's going to rebuild for January to the end of the season to reevaluate who he wants in his team and maybe get a clear out if need it. Uh, but hopefully that doesn't happen in our next three games and beat them at Ibrox and then we kick on and get 10 in a row. But uh, that looks as if it's a big ask now. So I think if we lose against Rangers, the league's over. So it's maybe time to part ways. I, I don't know. But hopefully that's not the case. And last question. I just want to ask Wilson this before we, we close up. Looking at this achievement from Celtic, what, what would you say was a better team the first Rogers team or Martin O'Neill's treble winning team? Uh, Martin O'Neill's treble's team, but Brendan Rogers played better football. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, that's a bit, I love watching Martin O'Neill's team, just uh, full of absolute world class players and for a Celtic opinion. Winners, I. Uh, Brendan Rogers, obviously, Celtic fans don't obviously like him, but what he brought to the club is. Uh, the way he played his football, the way he got everybody playing under him is the way... Then you look at maybe the last couple of months looking at over at the dugout at Celtic, you've got... I don't get this sitting... Ross County scored a second goal, you look over and Stratton's got the laptop out showing Lennon the goal. Let's go out and start slotting your players and try to get 
and try and chew them up to try and get back but to the game. But... That's where the problem started when Rogers left. I think it was it was a case of replacing with replace Rogers with somebody equivalent to Rogers instead of the cheap option. I, probably I, think, I, think I think at the time, I think at the time, to finish off that season, you know, um, I think Lennon was the right man at the right time. And then it's a hard one for the board because yeah. Yeah. finished the league and won the Scottish, he's done it. Um, um, so it's a hard one. And then if you bring in a new manager, it, as, as it was, eight league titles in a row, does that manager maybe take time to adapt and... Mm-hmm. You know, so you think, well, let's get it continuous. But again, and I keep harping back to this, this, this situation that's, that Celtic find themselves in, yes, it's their fault, but what you have to remember is Rangers are absolutely flying. Mm-hmm. They've learned from their mistakes. They've spent a lot of money again. They've got a big squad. You know, their competition for places are flying in Europe. I, I think sometimes we kind of concentrate on how bad Celtic are rather than how much Rangers have improved and how better they've got, to be honest. Rangers, it's, it's hard to see, but Rangers are absolutely flying. I think yeah. maybe the last couple of months, Celtic have been trying to, get that, trying to get that team. <laughs> Rangers are maybe swapping out one and two a game. They've got a settled team. Their defence is usually the, the, the same back four, uh, McGregor and goal. So they've got that base. Celtic are swapping all the time. There's another uh, change of day, obviously, at the back. Uh, with Taylor who's come in the last couple of games Laxalt we've got him in one for uh, Milan so I think Rangers have got a settled team they're absolutely flying all the thing that's missing for them as I said earlier is Morelos uh, chipping in with goals uh, so if he starts banging the goals in then obviously uh, it's, it's no looking good for Celtic but as you say they've got Kent who's kind of been out a wee bit of form but he's obviously that player that can bring uh, create the chances as well and they've got the boy came out roof and you've got somebody like Jermaine Defoe sitting on the bench to come on and Obviously, you've got good squad and uh, depth. Definitely. That'll do for this week. I just want to thank our special guest, Ryan, for coming on. It's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, cheers. I've enjoyed it. I got a wee bit of football chat with all this COVID part or so. Uh, it's been good. Brilliant, mate. Well, it's been slotting that shell gear, can't I know. <laughs> Brilliant. I just want to make a wee quick message as well. Obviously, with the current situation, just obviously well, everybody's he, everybody's here for every, all our viewers everybody that anybody that wants to get in touch uh, wants to talk about anything please let us know just everybody's here for everybody at this point we're just hoping everybody pulls through this we're going to be back next week for a, a bumper episode of the, the Scottish Football Show we're also going to have a wee exciting announcement of what we've got over the festive period but Wilson thanks very much again it's been a pleasure right, thanks Scott lovely to meet you right. Ryan right. same to you mate all the best right. we'll see you next week thanks right. very much everyone cheers cheers